people are really into doing and creating things themselves. The rise of technology like 3D printing and open source platforms like Arduino have made it possible to do just that. The maker movement involves individuals and groups of people making something out of nothing. More specifically, makers are tinkerers, hackers, and artists tapping into open source hardware, plastic, discarded electronics, and other materials to create anything from 3D printed spaceships, to flying toasters, to clothing that lights up. You'll be sure to find these people at places like Maker Fair, which is described as a part science fair, part county fair. Last year, 1.2 million people attended all over the world, but Maker Fair is not the only space for makers. There are an estimated 2,000 maker spaces worldwide. In the US, 26% of cities have them. The overall market for 3D printing products and other maker services is expected to hit $6 billion by next year. In this country alone, there are an estimated 135 million adults who are makers. To help us learn more about the maker movement, we have Zach Kaplan of Inventables right here with us in the studio. Inventables is a hardware store for makers to purchase 3D carving machines and accessories. Led by CEO Zach Kaplan, Inventables has raised $10 million for its easel software platform and 3D carving machines. 3D carving is not the same as 3D printing. With 3D carving, you start with a big block of materials and carve out what you want to make. 3D printing is basically the opposite. With the products and tutorials on Inventables, makers can create anything from pencil boxes to laptop stands to electric cars. Hey, thanks so much for joining me here today. Thanks for having me. So tell me, what's driving the maker movement? I think it's a sort of a bunch of things. One, access to all these technologies is getting super cheap. It used to be you had to spend thousands on software and thousands on hardware. Now, like our easel software is free and the machines are a couple thousand dollars. In the last few years, there's, there seems to have been a bit of a resurgence in the maker movement. What yeah. do you think is driving that? I think that the culture is starting to come to life because the internet's making it easy to learn about all this stuff instantly. You can go to YouTube and learn anything you want. So what, what would you say is the best way for someone like myself who has no idea how to build anything <laughs> to get involved in the maker movement? First thing you can do is just go out to one of the maker fairs. Okay, and what are the maker fairs for those who are not familiar? Yeah, so it's like a combination of like a carnival. Think of a carnival and a county fair, but take out the animals and add a bunch of technology. Got it. And so can you describe like what what would you see at a maker fair? Like what, what could you expect? Yeah, so you would see digital manufacturing tools, like you'd see some 3D carving machines, you would see a bunch of exhibits that are typically a burning man, mm -hmm. like a life-size submarine that is like driving through uh, the fair. Cool. Uh, you would see battle bots, drone competitions, and electric go-karts that are racing. Nice. So all that sounds really cool, yeah. but what's the market opportunity there? Is, there? is there a way to really make money out of these products coming out of the maker movement? So part of it is just education, teaching kids about things like digital manufacturing. And um, part of it is then once they are pursuing careers, we're starting to see a whole like, group of indie manufacturers. Hmm. It's not your father's manufacturing. It's not big factories, right? This is one, two, three people, and they have a small desktop tool, probably using free software, and they make a really cool niche product. Okay, and like, who, who are these people? Are, are they kids, are they older people? Do they have jobs? Can you kind of break down the kind of person who might yeah, be so, into this so or is into this? It's definitely all over the map, but the, the common theme is they're creatives. Um, we're seeing a lot of like, engineers who are retiring starting businesses. We're seeing a lot of kids who are graduating from college and instead of getting a traditional job, they're starting one of these indie manufacturing businesses. Um, so it's hipsters, okay. creative people, engineers. Yeah. Got it. And what role do uh, technologies like Arduino and Raspberry Pi play in all of this? Yeah, so those are sort of like the brains or of the electronics of these things. So um, if you wanted to make like a drone and fly it all around, you could use like an Arduino to control it. So it's like a mini computer? Yeah, a Raspberry Pi is a, is a mini computer okay. and an a Arduino is a microcontroller. Okay, got it. Where do you see the maker movement going in the, next, in the next year or so? Yeah, so I think of the maker movement as sort of like the educational piece of digital manufacturing. And what's happened is traditional factories are really good for high volume production. Mm -hmm. But um, these like sort of indie manufacturing businesses are good for serving niches. And we're just going to see an explosion of all these really cool niche products 
that are made by indie manufacturers on demand because they don't have to hold inventory and they don't have to make an investment and they don't have to pitch like the guy at Circuit City who right. is a buyer because first of all Circuit City doesn't exist anymore right. and second of all you don't need to get into big retail to sell one of these products. Right, so then you'll see these products on places like Etsy or eBay. Do yeah, people Etsy, still use eBay? Shopify, like a, a lot of them yeah. have their own store okay. where they're powering it by Shopify or something like that. Okay, got it. Um, okay, well, great. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat. Sure thing. Bullish airs every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific, and you can find it here on TechCrunch.com.